Hello. Welcome to SVG TV News for Wednesday, June 24th, 2015. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Parents, friends and guardians all came together yesterday to celebrate with the 837 students of the St. Vincent and Grenadines Community College who successfully completed their certificates, associates and bachelor's programs at the educational institution. The college 2015 graduation ceremony at the Victoria Park incorporated all four divisions, the technical and vocational, arts and sciences, nursing and teacher education divisions. The ceremony was held under the theme, Raising the Bar, Striving for Excellence. A total of 77% of the college's 2015 graduating class was women. In his remarks, Director of the College, Nigel Scott, says the June 23rd graduation is a milestone in the relatively short history of the institution, as it marks the largest number of graduating students at its annual graduation ceremony. This past academic year has had its challenges, its triumphs, and its aha moments. Through them all, we have all prevailed. We have learned, and we are stronger. At the Division of Teacher Education, we began the academic year with 161 full-time students in four programs. 41 in early childhood, 42 in the secondary program, 59 in the primary program, and 19 in the TVET program. In addition, there were 58 part-time students, 21 in the accredited Bachelors in Social Work program franchised from the Jamaica Theological Seminary, and 37 in the accredited Bachelors in Social Studies Education franchise from the University of the West Indies Cayfield campus. This division continues to produce very good results as they take the task of training the nation's teachers very seriously. Scott says beginning September 2015, the college will be upholding strictly its policy of no entry or acceptance of persons without a passing grade in CSEC English A. No student would be allowed into the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College without a passing grade in CSEC English A. We are particularly pleased today to be graduating 21 of the 22 students enrolled in the Bachelor's in Social Work program within our Division of Teacher Education. Four years have quickly gone by since these students began their program with us. I wish to publicly thank the students whose names are in the booklet for staying the course, their spouses and significant others for supporting them, their lecturers for guiding them, and the practicum coordinators and agencies for ensuring that they obtained the much needed experience to complete this program. Also in September, the SVGCC is scheduled to be visited by the National Accreditation Board of SVG, which the director says will allow for a series of intense meetings with the college's Board of Governors, along with all divisions and units. Following this visit, they will provide us with their feedback on our areas of strength and weakness and how we can turn our threats and challenges into opportunities. We continue to prepare for this visit, and in January this year, we reassigned one of our senior staff members, Mrs. Susanna Ford Providence, to the Portfolio of Accreditation and Quality Assurance Officer to strengthen this area of our institution's work. Valedictorian of the SVGCC 2015 graduating class, Kyle James, describes the day as a very special and rewarding one and explains when he reminisces on the time spent at the college, the two things that come to mind are endless work and endless laughter. Slacking off did not bring us to this stage. It was hard work and many late nights that did. So at this moment, I would like for us to give these graduates a special round of applause for their diligence and perseverance over the past years. Nonetheless, we managed to establish new friendships, maintain old ones, and have fun whenever we could. And for all of these things and more, we must be thankful. 
In fact, I would like to take this moment to express gratitude to the lecturers, parents, sponsors, spouses, and the children of graduates for all that they have done to help us achieve this milestone today. Thank you for the many life lessons you taught us. I would like to specifically thank my parents, Franklin and Louisa James, and my lecturers. The support which the aforementioned groups provided to us helped to make these two years more bearable. In his feature address, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Foreign Trade, Commerce and Information Technology, Camilo Gonzalez, told the students that their individual achievements have justified the government's continued faith on focusing on youth and youth aspirations. You have proven and will go on proving our conviction that education is the surest path out of poverty, the most powerful tool to change the world, and the means by which you unlock the doors to freedom of choice and opportunity. You were born at the right time, a time when your parents and grandparents and neighbors and uncles and aunts decided unambiguously to put their faith in your future and to dream for you a life that may have been beyond the realm of their own parents' dreams for them. Of course, if you had been born a year later, all of you would have gotten laptops. But you will share the distinction of being the very last batch of Vincentian students ever to not receive a laptop from the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. <laughs> but you have degrees, so let's, let's let bygones be bygones. It's much more important. Gonzales told the graduating class that the one thing they must not do is to feel like they have made it or feel that their current or future degrees and certificates will make them superior to those who lack their qualifications. If your focus in life is to accumulate superficial outward, outward signs of success, you will become either lazy or frustrated. If your purpose in life is limited to position and money, then you will live a hollow and purposeless life. There is more to life and more to life than where you are today and what apparent accolades you may obtain tomorrow. So I have one simple bit of advice, two words that I want you to keep with you when you are unsure, when you are alone in the valley of decision, and when you don't know which path is the correct one. Just two words, and it's not ask Ralph. It is be bold. Be bold. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment is embarking on strengthening the response to the rising scourge of non-communicable diseases and other diseases in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. NCDs are the leading cause of mortality and morbidity in the region and also in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. CARICOM member states have the highest burden of non-communicable diseases in the region of the Americas. To this end, the Ministry has started work to implement the chronic care model and is this week holding discussions with health care workers on its assessment tool and collaborating plan. At the opening of a workshop at the Methodist Church Hall earlier today, Dean of the SVG Community College Division of Nursing, Beverly Liverpool, told the participants that as health care workers, it is important to always strive to improve the quality of care offered to patients. Because we know the problem that we are having with non-communicable diseases, I mean, we know that it's right now it's a burden on, on the healthcare system and the country on a whole, socially and economically. And we have to try at our level what little we can do in whatever way we can impact. We have to make an impact in a positive manner on what we're seeing here. So we, every one of us have a role to play. And I intend that this today's workshop that you will really put your all into it and participate so that after now we can introduce this chronic care model in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and it will make 
life easier for all of us and it will improve the quality of care that we are giving to persons especially with chronic diseases. A similar workshop was held in Bekwe on Monday and Tuesday. The sessions are being facilitated by Dr. Tomo Kanda, Pahal's advisor on chronic diseases and mental health. The Ecuadorian Army Corps of Engineers, which recently constructed four bridges here, were all honored and presented with gifts and plaques at a send-off cocktail party on Monday evening at the official residence of the Prime Minister. The Ecuadorians who spent the last eight months here constructing bridges in the constituencies of North and South Leeward all left the state on Tuesday, June 23rd. Speaking at Monday's cocktail, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez formally thanked the Ecuadorian team for the restorative work done in St. Vincent and the Grenadines following the devastating floods of December 24, 2013. Dr. Gonzalez explains that the central purpose of his government's foreign policy is to enhance the country's capacity to address more efficaciously external challenges and to do so within the interest of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The interest of our people is tied inextricably with the challenges outside. Our domestic policy and our foreign policy are one. The foreign policy is an extension of our domestic policy. They're not separate. We have a set of values embodied in our constitution, in our history, in our culture. We are an important component, a magnificent component of an authentic civilization, a civilization of nobility, the Caribbean civilization, and it has a trajectory for further ennoblement. We treasure our independence and our sovereignty. We acknowledge that in the 21st century, we cannot have a notion of a pristine foreign policy, a pristine sovereignty, sorry, as enshrined in the Treaty of Westphalia. President of the Teachers Union, Oswald Robinson, says that there is a need for a main juvenile facility in this country. In an interview with SVG TV News earlier today, Robinson says it is critical that young offenders are not placed with more seasoned criminals and that the recent incident in the Camden Park Lomans Leeward area, which resulted in a 12-year-old student being charged with murder, should highlight to the relevant authorities the need for such a facility. The Teachers Union president says while he advocates for an a facility to be constructed for juvenile offenders, he would like to see more programs in place to deal with unruly children. I don't think it's a good idea to mesh the juveniles with the hardcore criminals, especially adults. It's going to be a challenge for the state because we are living in harsh economic times. But that is something that we need. But I also believe in prevention. Prevention is better than cure. So if we start to nip it in the bud very early, deal with the source of the problems. There are some students, they come and you know they are more or less a challenge. They are challenged students. So before they get out of hand, we have to make sure that we have a special program. Robinson also called for more counselors to be placed in schools with what he termed the systematic programs to address unruly students and the causes of their rebelliousness. They have some people coming into the school, they must be counseled as well. As well. You know, like some heavyweights, you have some people in school, they are just there and waiting on their, their pension or gratuity. They don't have a program. And, and those are some of the things that you have to inherit. The counselors must have a a systematic program that when these students are identified you start to work with them you don't wait until something happens or you hear a story because the children they are very smart and no matter how skilled you are as a counselor there some of them will not tell you the things which are really hurting them in the expression I mean you cannot always judge a book by its cover but the expression on some people, some children's faces 
you could see that things are not well with them. The Teachers Union president says community groups also have a role to play to take youngsters under their wings so that good values are instilled through social interaction. Robinson also expressed concern over the negative use of technology by youngsters, particularly through music. But most of them are using the technology and the type of music. And they, these are like their, their role models. They're not looking up to the aunties and the uncles that we used to call these people in the community, the positive role models. They are attracted to and by the technology. And they are taking in a lot of these things and not being able to process the information that they are taking in. They are consuming a lot of these information. And therefore, that is possible one of the sources of molding or inculcating violence in our young people. The public service is under growing pressures to meet the mountain demands of citizens here and in the diaspora. That's according to Minister with Responsibility for the Public Service, Maxwell Chaz, who was delivering the Public Servants Day message to the nation yesterday. The minister used the opportunity to urge public servants to work to improve the public service, adding that they must adapt to keep up with the change in society and the rapidly increasing standards globally. The public service is therefore under increasing pressure to meet the growing demands and expectations of the Vincentian citizens at home and of course those in the diaspora. It must be noted that hundreds of persons who live in the diaspora are accustomed to high standards since they live in highly developed countries and they expect us to be like that. Let us continue to build our systems so that we can go from strength to strength. Minister Charles further noted that the Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO, as well as the World Food Summit, have recognized the work of public servants in SVG to successfully reducing by half the number of persons living in poverty or malnourished in the period of 1990 to 2015. He says that this achievement cannot be ignored as it wasn't an easy feat to accomplish. Of course, it's well known that in this country, indigence has been reduced from 27.5% in 1995 to a mere 2.9% in 2008. Quite a remarkable achievement. 79 countries were identified as having met Millennium Development Goal 1, but only 29 of those countries had reduced both the extent of poverty and the extent of undernourishment. I'm proud to say that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is one of those 29 countries. And Minister Charles said for SVG to become closer in meeting the United Nations Millennium Development Goal Target, the continued development and strengthening of national institutions, and the improvement of technical and administrative capacity to deal with threats to the public sector will be based on the implementation of the 2015 Development Agenda, which he says has become the framework of SVG's core development. Re-engineering economic growth. Two, enabling increased human and social development. Three, promoting good governance and increasing the effectiveness of public administration. Four, improving physical infrastructure, preserving the environment, and building the resistance to climate change. And five, building national pride, identity, and culture. Family and friends of 25-year-old Glendon Pompey of Kittels are concerned over his disappearance. Pompey, who is also known as Shaka or Rumpo, is a farmer and was last seen on Tuesday, May 12th, at his home wearing a white t-shirt, burgundy three-quarter shirts, and gray sneakers. According to a close relative, attempts to call Pompey on his cell phone have proved futile, as the calls go directly to voicemail. Pompey is about 5 feet 7 inches, dark in complexion, and has been described as a friendly but quiet person. 
His family believes that foul play is involved in his disappearance and is pleading with persons who may know something about his whereabouts to contact the nearest police station or call 526-2312. Kima, a small laborer of the Vermont Valley, has, has been sentenced to six months behind bars on a charge of damage to property. The sentence was handed down this morning by acting senior magistrate Carla James after he was convicted for the offense which is said to have occurred in the area of Gibson Building Supplies next to the Victoria Park on May 7, 2015. Reports are that on the date in question, the Assistant Commissioner of Police, Christopher Benjamin, parked his Jeep in the area to attend a meeting with the Carnival Development Corporation, and it was during such time that Small proceeded to smash the driver's side window of the vehicle. Carnival Beach is coming right up. Stay with us. Welcome to Carnival Beat. Lynx Mass Band is back on the scene after a two-year absence. Their presentation for Vinci Mass 2K15 is entitled Songs from Marshall Montano. And according to the band leader Cornelius Thomas, the band is back to reclaim its position among the top in mass production. This year's presentation consists of six sections, two children and four adults. Thomas urges persons who will be playing with the band not to wait until last minute to register. Here's a more in-depth look at the 2015 presentation by the Lynx Mass Band. Lynx is like a future band, you know. You know, it's just be young guys around me, young ladies, and we do everything. And we, we just come in good as all US bands. This is Pump Your Flag. We choose um, black and gold because we know black and gold is a very, very outstanding color scheme to deal with. So we set a pace with the boys, them coming heavy. We doing girls here uh water flowing as you could see we, we use fringe which gonna represent like the rain drops and stuff we use the color scheme blue and white because you know you look at the sky and you have water below this is a song that marshall do this year we're using a wire bra with this section so you know all the lovers are wire bra this will be carrying a wire bra and you could see the pill we, rep we um, use represent as the remedy for the guys. More, this is Ministry of Road. You know, that's was a big track for Marshall Montano. As you could see, the road workers in the construction had the sign stop and go. And we do it sexy because we know a lot of these ladies now don't want no big set of clothes on them. So it erupt. This is a song that Marshall did this year as well. Eruption and, you know, the fiery stuff in Carnival. So we choose the color scheme, red, yellow, gold, orange, and black. The fog. This is uh, our night mass, which we always come tough. And believe me, a lot of guys, a lot of band had to watch it for the fog because we're gonna fog up the place that night. We had one section from the band competition in 2005 when we came on the scene with the Snow Queen. We had placed in um, junior section, junior band of the year, and king and queen as well. I was in the top three. And despite financial constraints and a late start from organizing the Miss Plus Size pageant in Trinidad, work is said to be progressing steadily at the Butex International Mass Tent. According to marketing manager Paul Williams, the theme this year is Our Heritage, and the sections will highlight some of the main festivals, such as Heroes Day, Independence, Fish Fest, and Emancipation. Williams admits that, like most bands, finances often restrict tents from developing their full potential. She hopes that her small band can display six sections this year. We felt it was very important that we, you know, showcase our heritage as a form of um, advertising of our various festivals and that sort of thing here in St. Vincent. So we felt that as long as you have international media looking on, it's technically saying that you can come to one of these festivals. So I think it was, you know, something nice. Of course, this is a small band and um, I would like to see a large band. Um, but unfortunately, the, the businesses tend to sponsor the same band every year rather than sharing up so you know once you come up with something you know you cannot see a full potential because limited funds 
The Butex International Marketing Manager acknowledges that it has become financially strenuous on sponsors who are constantly solicited by mass bands and the Carnival Development Committee. She credited other bands for being reasonable in their approach to requesting assistance and expressed gratitude with those who continue to help. We have to then use GP foam so this can hold so when the masquerader is dancing that the headpiece doesn't fall off. This material is $40 per yard. Okay? And this is just for the inside, $40 per yard. So, Shawan, if you would calculate with me that you have six sections that you have to put in GP film at $40 a yard, what we're speaking about. In addition to this, you have to pay your music truck on the road, you know, which is sometimes work out to be $15,000, $2,000. It all depends on the amount. Um, you also have to shop, but we would like to say thanks to CDC and LIAT for making our trip possible to Trinidad, you know, in terms of getting a discount and what's not so that we can go to shop. So that is one thing that we're able to work on. And it is not easy when the CDC itself are writing to the same sponsors that the mass bands are, you know, soliciting at the same time. It is a clash. So it's a sort of mix up. But I guess over the years, the bands understood that in order for us to have our price money and our, um, and our appearance fee. We definitely can't hit the same door with CDC.